All right, let's go back to my hometown, H-Town, and talk to Alex. Hey, what's up, Alex? Dr. Deloney, how are you? I'm partying, man. How about you? Better than I deserve. Excellent. I'm not partying at all, actually. I'm at work. What are you doing, man? No, not much. Very cool. How can I help? Um, okay, well, um, um, and just in short, um, I have a history of being very rageful. Um, if a person is trying to make me mad or angry and they say the right thing, I can go from very happy to full-on rage mode very quickly. Uh, this has resulted in a wedge between uh, my parents and myself. It resulted in me pushing away my ex-girlfriend, whom I still love with all my heart. And I'm curious as to how I can get rid of this because it's turning me into something that I don't recognize. I mean, it's, it, it sounds like emotional regulation issues. How long have you been rageful? My mom says it started when I had brain surgery. <laughs> Alex, lead with that, dude. Lead with that. So I had brain surgery, and then <laughs> I became uh, had some emotional regulation. Toward. What, what kind of brain surgery did you have? I've had epilepsy for 17 years. Okay, so you've got brain lesions. Did they go in and take out a chunk of your brain somewhere? What'd they do? They, they attempted to. So it was a week and a half of brain mapping. So that cut, they cut into yep. your brain, your your skull, map out the brain. And they wait for your seizures and then track them and trace them? And try to, to try to determine where exactly the seizures are coming from. Yeah. Where were yours coming from? They determined that it was, it was far too close to Broca's area that if they cut into that area um, and missed, mm -hmm. I, would not, I would not be able to speak for the rest of my life, worst case scenario. Oh, so that was down in your frontal lobe? Uh, nothing. Nothing. They said they made it my choice. They said we would need parental consent. No, no, no. I'm, say, I, I'm saying it's down there. I th that's that area right behind your ear, right? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and so it was close. It was far enough back that they didn't want to dig in there. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, yeesh. Okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not entirely certain if since I, I didn't suffer like a, a massive, like massive brain damage or a head injury, I'm not sure if there's a correlation between change in behavior and just like an invasive surgery such as that. Um, but that's when my, my parents said that um, my, my anger started to increase. Hmm. So I've got two trains of thought here, okay? And I want to just say outright, I'm not a neuroscientist by any stretch of the imagination, not even close, okay? Um, okay. My first thought is, have you heard of the Phineas Gage story? Yes, sir. When the, the bolt went like through his eye and out his... his yeah, it, it shot through his, his frontal lobe. Yeah, he was a, a railroad guy in the 1800s, and he was packing powder, and it exploded, and it shot it like a missile through his brain, And um, but he lived. And mm -hmm. yes. the story goes, before this happened, he was a fun-loving, fun guy, and the part of the brain that it severed that it shot through um, had to do with emotional regulation part of his brain and his frontal lobe and he the people around him said he became a radically different person he was, couldn't keep down a job and then 12 years later he ended up with some pretty significant seizures and he passed away but he, he became really they call him the father of neuroscience because it started this idea like oh there's certain parts of your brain that house certain activities and certain um where's memory and where's motor functioning and where is thought and where's laughter and where's fear all that became came from oh he lived he's just a totally different guy now and so that's my first thought either you've got a brain lesion somewhere or when they were in there messing around um something happened that's number one the uh -huh. other side of it is you may have heard me say this if you ever listen to the show but anger i believe is to quote Rage Against the Machine, anger anger is a gift. It points us towards things that are not as they should be, or as we see them, not as they should be. And I view rage as caged up anger with nowhere to go, and it becomes explosive. And I can imagine if I'm you. Now mm -hmm. again, I'm rattling off the top of my head here. Okay, I if I'm you, and I've been suffering from seizures for so long. 
How were they grand mal seizures? They're called partial complex. Oh, geez. So okay. they were, they only affect half of my brain. And do you know when they're coming or they just hit you out of the blue? Yes, I can tell when they're coming. And what's the, um, do you get catatonic? Do you, do you have a full on seizure on the ground? Like what, what, what is your physical, um, expression of these seizures? So if I were to have one, um, just like, you know, in front of you face to face or to someone who is not familiar with, with what a seizure looks like, they would think that I'm kind of just like tuning them out and just, okay. you know, n- not paying attention to what they're saying. I might just stand up and like walk around aimlessly, mm-hmm. uh, pick something out, put it down. Um, I'm, I'm, I've had one grand mal seizure in my life. Okay. So when you have these seizures, you feel them coming on, they come uh-huh. so frustrating. It's like you're not in control of your body, right? Exactly. They happen at least twice a day. Okay. And you go to all this brain mapping, all this surgery, they get all this stuff done and they tell you, sorry, man, we can't help you. If that's me, I would be angry that I got this brain. I'm looking at all these kids in my grade and they've all got brains that are different that seem to be functioning and they're drinking them and smoking them away. But I got one that chooses to shower me with elect- electricity a couple of times a day. And I, I, and then the doctors say, Hey, we can't do anything for you. And that just puts a lid on that anger. And in my world, that's rage. Uh-huh. And so what I'm telling you is, I don't know if this is um, physiological or if it's psychological. What I think is important is you've identified this as a problem. Is that fair? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Is it something that you have determined you are unable to help? Um, my, my anger? Yes, your rage. You're, you're lashing out at people is what I'm asking you. Yes. Uh, for example, my parents, um, my ex-girlfriend was one of them. Um, I, I, I regret it immensely. But do you, do you, if you and I were just sitting across a table looking at each other, would you tell me she said a thing and I was physically unable to stop what happened next? Or if you plumb the depths of Alex, would you say, no, I was just so mad and frustrated. I just snapped, but I could have not. It's hard because it's a little bit of both. Um, Once I have started yelling at someone, that's when I'm I'm unable to stop. That's fine. So what, what, how far up the river can you move? I, so for example, the other, the other night, my mom said, uh, it was, it was my fault that, um, my girlfriend and I broke up and it, she, she was right. She was just telling me things that were true that I did not want to hear. And I just kind of had, had to bite my tongue and let's stop right there. Let's stop it. right there. What if, mm-hmm. When your mom starts telling you something you don't want to hear and you feel your body as though you feel a seizure coming on, you start to feel your body tense up and it starts to become a powder keg. What if you said, mom, I love you. The things you're saying are are right. I need to distance myself from this conversation for a minute. Um, Let's circle back at another time. And that other time may be when you've had more rest. The other time may be when you're not stressed out. The other time may be before work instead of after work. Or any number of things. Okay. But when I say how far up river can you get, there's a moment when you're going over the waterfall. It's too late, man. That thing's we got to we got to that, that boat's going over the waterfall, and we got to see what happens at the end of that cycle, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know enough about. I I wouldn't even know what to do if I looked at your brain scans or anything like that so i don't know i don't know what the surgeons did i don't know any of that of your psychological state i don't know any of that stuff but based on what you're telling me i think the adventure is not trying to hold back a boat going over the waterfall i think the adventure is 
knowing, uh oh, I just found myself on this highway again, and this isn't a good highway for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop the car and I'm going to get out and walk if I need to, but I'm not going to go down that highway. And what, what I'm guessing you're going to find is some significant increases in self-control that you didn't otherwise have before. Does that make, am I making sense? Yes. Is that scary, um, frustrating? Because here's the deal. All of us have to do that on a daily basis. Your your project ahead of you is just going to be harder than mine, and I think I both just, of, we just have to own that reality. Uh, Do what? Sorry. Accepting the way things are currently um, is is very uh, hard to do. It is, it is. What's the alternative? Mm, well, to quote actually, you um, go to war with reality. Yeah. I'm kind of done going to war, Alex. Mm -hmm. All I look around to see a pot of, pile of bodies in my life, and I'm kind of done with that. Yeah. So I'm going to make peace with it. I'm going to make peace with it. But um, I, I heard you you talk about speaking about you know how how children should be brought up your whole like you know they should they should want to come home. Mm -hmm. I want my parents to think that I, I, I want to come home. I don't want them to think that I hate them. Okay. Have you here? Number one, you can't control what your parents think. And I hate that for you, but you can't. The second thing is, is no matter what's happening it, behaviorally, your parents have some sort of guilt over the way your brain works. It's the way parents are. They're wondering what they my brain works. Yep. They're wondering what they ate to give you this genetic issue. Or what they how what part of their DNA contributed to the wiring system. You know, like parents will go to the they will find a way to blame themselves, dude. And so it may be you do what I just said in that last segment, but you're doing it for parents. You flip it around. How old are you? 23, sir. 23. Man. Can you imagine scrounging the money up and taking your parents out to a cheap breakfast at Cracker Barrel there in Houston and saying, hey, I want y'all to know I love you so much. I'm so grateful for everything you've done. And I'm going to get to the bottom of this thing. And I'm going to ask you to, number one, um, stay with me. Don't give up on me because I'm not giving up on y'all. And I'm not giving up on Alex. Can you imagine that conversation? That would be amazing. Can you do that? Yeah. Would you do that? Hey, here's the deal. Would you do that for you? Because you're carrying so much weight, my brother. And here's the other piece of that. Letting them know, I, I'm going to work on, just use that analogy I just gave you. I'm going to work on trying to reclaim my emotional regulation. And that means I'm going to have to get way up river. And sometimes I may put my hand up and say, I need to back off, um, step away from this conversation. Um, if you can give me half hour, I would really appreciate it. And to tell them, don't take this as a sign of disrespect. I'm not being ugly. I just feel my body heading down a river that has a waterfall at the end of it. I don't want to do that. I'm trying to choose okay. a different way. And over time, your body hopefully will, def will will settle in. And if it doesn't, it may never, man. You've got some neurological architecture challenges that the rest of us don't have. And so again, instead of going to war with reality, just knowing I need to avoid these kind of confrontations because I get to a place where I can't come back. And I would strongly recommend that you get with the neuropsychologist and see if there's some sort of um, some sort of exercises you can do to begin to practice emotional regulation. The brain's got a magical way of drawing from other parts of the brain that don't normally do activities to engage that part of your brain to pick up the slack. Okay. Have you already done that? Have you met with a neuropsychologist? I met with, psych with a psychologist, not a neuropsychologist, no, sir. Okay. There's some, there's psychologists that are trained to look at your brain 
and to say, okay, here's the particular challenges in this particular part of your brain. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to express themselves behaviorally in this way. And so let's work here because I don't want to give you some tasks that are just unreasonable because of your brain architecture, right? Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't want you to beat yourself up for things that you can't help. I also don't want you to avoid things that you could help. You just didn't have a guy to take you through the jungle. But beyond all this stuff, before I let you go, mm -hmm. don't give up on Alex, man. Thank you. I'm serious. I can hear Thank you. you I can hear you're just freaking tired. I am. So tired. Probably tired of the seizures, tired of hurting people that you love, tired of being alone, tired of feeling alone. I, I, all my life, all I've ever thought about is myself. I took my family for granted. I hurt people that I loved. And I, I just, I don't want to be that person anymore. Okay. Two things. Number one, don't be. Number two. Cut yourself some slack, dude. You've been trying to not die your whole life. Is that fair? Yes. A couple of times a day, every day for your life, you are struck by lightning. No matter where you were, in the bathroom, with friends, talking to a cute girl, wherever you happen to be. You always knew at some point I'm going to get hit, and I don't know when, and I don't know where, and I don't know how it's going to look to the person I'm talking to. And that made you short, and that made you frustrated, and that made you hard to be around sometimes. Big whoop de freaking do. See it? Yeah. If a little 12-year-old boy came up to you and was trying to apologize because somebody said, I'm going to punch you in the face twice today, and you're never going to know what's coming. And you walked up, and that kid snapped at you like, hey. And he said, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry, sir. You would get down on both knees and say, little boy, someone told you they were going to hit you. It's okay. It's okay. And you'd hug that boy tightly, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yes. Hug Alex for me, because you're not right here in front of me. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Don't give up. What I imagine for you in the future is you've got an extraordinary story to tell. Little kids in your exact same situation. That one day you become a really pathfinding neuroscientist or you become a great local counselor or you just become a great accountant that's got a temper and that sometimes abruptly walks away from conversations. But that people look to because you're honest and you really understand what it feels like to not be at home in your own body. And so you're able to sit with people through all sorts of hell that they've walked through. What I'm saying is the world needs you. Don't, don't rob the world of the gifts you're going to give them. Get the help you need, my, my man. So grateful for you.